bonus with face, pat, and tiz. What's up, guys? Welcome to The Partners, a show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I'm one third of The Partners, your boy Tiz, along with... The other third of The Partners, the Padawan here, and I'm along with... Dramatic pause. The final piece, the final piece, the final piece of the chapter is facing the place somewhere in the race, but still running, keeping pace, man. Okay, bars, bars, bars. Speaking of running that rat race out here in these world, man, how's y'all week going, fellas? I can't yeah. complain this week. Even if I did, wouldn't really matter. But I really have no issues this week. Um, got a new gig, start my new job on Monday. So I be I feel really good about this job. Uh, I, I like what I'll be doing. I'll be actually doing what I like to do with it help people so i like i think it'd be really good it sets me up for future shit down the road where i can actually use what i get here and build on top of what i already have in the future so uh, i think it'd be a good thing and it's only five minutes from the house and that's the good thing that's the best thing i've been driving an hour and some change to work for the past like <laughs> six seven years oh my for god for the past six seven years i've been driving an hour to change to work back and forth Every day, I, I wear some change there. I wear some change back. Sixty miles there, sixty miles back. I work around the corner now from the house now. Five oh, yeah, minute drive. Dope. Yeah, that's dope. Five that does drive. add to the fatigue, like shit. That driving. Yeah, yep. and it adds gas. Gas ain't fucking that's cheap, true. man. Oh yeah, that's, gas. You know, it's gas money. Right I say. Oh, and God. one job. I was paying, I was putting at least $200 in my tank at, a, at one job I had a week, not every two, a week, every week, 200 to the tank. Who oh, fuck tank. that? So it, it grabbed her. That's why I left. <laughs> That's two car notes a month. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, fuck that shit, bro, bro. But other than that, I'm good, man. No mental, no mental issues this week. Um, mental health been on point. Um, faced a couple triggers, deflected them. Wow, I'll just deflect them shits real quick. Um, didn't feel them triggered at all by them. Um, saw them coming, dealt with them, blocked them off, kept progressing. So I feel like I'm doing really good this week on just trying to progress and move through the shit I've had going over the past weeks. So I'm feeling pretty awesome. Right on, right on. How can we support you this week, bro, in any way? Just continue to be the awesome friends that y'all are, man. If I need y'all, just pick up the phone. Right on. Definitely got you there. Um, I'll follow up. Hell, um, I would say this week so far is okay. Um, nothing bad has happened. Um, I definitely need to do more immersion therapy this week. Um, last week I felt like I did a lot of it, which was good for my therapy it was very triggering but it was good for that part of it but this week I've been kind of I don't know whether I'm just exhausted from last week or what but I've been kind of feeling myself going back into some of my patterns that I could fall into so I've tried to get more busy with uh podcast stuff as you can see I've been trying to like up the video releases and trying to put out more stuff again Mm -hmm. trying to get back into my flow with that I figure if I can like the more I can start doing my normal things, the more I can, you know, get comfortable in more situations. So been doing that. Um, definitely feeling a little weird. I think the only thing I'm really struggling with this week is because I'm on FMLA, uh, it's unpaid and that unpaid, like my PTO days run out. So I'm, I'm pretty much the next two paychecks not getting paid anything. And for me, that's the first time I'm not getting paid I, I don't even remember the last time. It's been a long time since I moved down here. Basically, like once I moved down here and got a job, I never stopped working. Like, and I've only been without a some type of a job. I would say maybe really two times in my life. So, like for me, it's very uncomfortable. Um, 
like, I know we good. Like, you know, this come after talks with my wife, the psychiatrist, therapist, everybody. So I, I know that I like financially we straight. I ain't stressing that, but it just feels weird to not be here. This, here yeah. this go. Let me pay these bills. Let me pay. Like, it's going to mm-hmm. feel weird as hell. And it just, as a man, it feels awkward. Like it's something I know I just need to get through and be happy that we're in a position where I could do that and it not ruin us. But at the same time, it's just uncomfortable for me. It just leads to a lot of, of my negative thought processes. So just kind of trying to fight those off. Um, I got therapy tomorrow night though, and I see my psychiatrist Thursday. So, you know, I got the stuff coming. I've been doing some, some some stuff today to do some self help. So we working, but yeah, man, it's just a weird week, I guess. It's just I, I, there's nothing bad really happening. I just feel weird because I know what's coming on the horizon. Okay. You know. Yeah. Okay. So how can we be that for you? Man, I don't honestly know, man. Like like you said, just being there to talk, but. I feel like if there's any week where I might need like a pull up session to just talk man shit or just kind of vent about what I'm feeling, this may be that week. Um, I feel like this is probably the most I've had that negative self talk be as loud as it is in the past week and a half. So like, that's kind of bothered me because I have been making decent progress. So like, yeah, you know, it, so I guess same as you, like, if I do hit y'all up and be like, hey, y'all got time to pull up, you know, I might need that little 30 minutes to an hour to just vent, get somebody outside perspective, get some some mad advice from the fellas, you know, that type shit. Well, shit, bro, you already know we that for you, man. I don't be doing shit in the daytime. If I am doing a part-time job, shit, I'm, I'm just in the car anyway, so just getting to get your boy. You know, we can right first on. and doing everything. Remember, I'm always... I try to make myself available for to my friends and family as much as needed. So, because I know when now when my episodes come, I know y'all are there for me. So, yeah. always, bro. Respect, man. Appreciate it. But yeah, that's it, man. You know, we're gonna we're gonna persevere at some point. We're gonna make it through a shit. How you doing? Told you. This shit really the only mental problem I have right now is this fucking headache. I like uh. Gotcha. The day that's still remnants from that shit from the vaccine. You know what is crazy? I feel like me getting that 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 last shot happened at the same time, just the weather just dropped like 20 degrees. So I'm getting hit different sides and then had a little fever this weekend. And it and and the funny thing was it wasn't like it was an all-day thing, it was like I felt it for like a couple of hours and then I got over it or whatever. But off and on, I don't know. I think it's just like a sinus thing. My body getting used to colder weather and that's why I got this random headache. It's all soothing in with drawing and these little side gigs I'm trying to finish and everything. And um, yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty good. I can't complain, man. I'm, uh, I'm just bracing myself for the next three days of these ten hour shifts. That's all, pretty much. That's real. That's real as shit. Mm-hmm. Well, how can we be there to support you this week, man? Uh, you need us to call a doctor or anything? Like, you've been kind of struggling for a minute here, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I actually, you know, my 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 stepdad's he's. He in the medical field, so I got him to check me out. But I'm good. I just gotta take um take my um my sinus meds. My um been taking smoothies with elderberry in it and uh, drinking Mad OJ, and whatnot. So pretty good. Why not happy OJ? Able... Huh? Why not happy OJ? What what kind of OJ what? did I say? Happy OJ, <laughs> mad, mad OJ. Boy, you stupid as hell. <laughs> I was like, "What the hell?" I'm like, "Did he say a brand name or something?" Like, what is that? <laughs> oh man, oh man. Duh. I was like, "Wait a minute, what kind of OJ did I talk about, man?" 
Yeah, yeah he, had me off. he had me <laughs> off with that one. I, I wasn't ready for that one. Okay. Oh, <laughs> All right, then. I want some new shit. So I'm good. <laughs> well, we'll get you some uh, happy OJ again. <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's that's the reason why I ain't, I ain't catch what he was saying the first time, man. Yeah, he slipped that <laughs> one in there, Paul. Uh, yeah. yeah, he threw me with that. <laughs> well, man, while we feeling good and shit, I might well go ahead and kick it on all. Let's get this show this show rolling, baby. Uh, with the positive black news, my people. Uh, the cool shit that black people are doing, experiencing, creating, and being a part of this week. Um, got a couple stories for y'all. All four stories tonight are coming from blacknews.com. And the first story tonight is a black IT consultant leaves his job and creates a powerful mental technology that helps veterans with PTSD. So Gerard Ngwede is a highly educated African-American man from Cameroon who was diagnosed with PTSD in 2016 after being repeatedly assaulted by the police for no reason. His father was a military man all of his life, but he wanted him to become a Catholic priest. Gerard only spent two years at the seminary, but after grad school, he decided to start a career in technology and quickly became a world-class IT consultant, managing million dollar programs for state and federal government agencies, as well as major corporations such as HBO. Lockheed Martin, and the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Gerard says that on the morning of December 23rd, 2015, everything changed when the NYPD Police Commissioner Bill Bratton arrived at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York with two NYPD officers and wrongfully arrested Gerard in his workspace inside of the Federal Reserve Bank for a bogus reason. He says that he lost his job, was humiliated, arrested, and handcuffed for the first time in his entire life. In February 2016, true. right. In February 2016, a New York State judge ruled Gerard's arrest at the Federal Reserve Bank as legally insufficient. However, just one week later, he says that nine NYPD police officers invaded his apartment on the 33rd floor after breaking his door. After breaking in his door, they injected him with drugs. They beat him, and almost killed him. All while claiming they were trying to help. After this incident, Bullshit. Gerard filed another lawsuit. And this time his lawsuit was against the NYPD and Bill Bratton himself, who stepped down from his job as an NYPD police commissioner just a few days after. He says that the Federal Reserve Bank edited the video surveillance and continues to deny Bill Bratton was involved. But after all of this, Gerard ended up with PTSD and was able to build powerful tools that helped him to personally recover his mind and find his path. What he developed uses universal modeling language, a visual language that IT engineers use to visually demonstrate how computer, sim how computer systems inter interoperate in the back end, or how data flows between different modules, et cetera. When researching PTSD, Gerard landed on countless military websites and learned so much more about PTSD and veteran suicides. So that's when he realized that the visual system and tools he initially created by accident would actually be perfect for veterans as well. And since the government or the VA doesn't offer a similar program, he built a program called the, the Faith's Magnet Mental Transition Assistance Program, or Mental TAP, which has since helped countless of military veterans and their families achieve their full potential in the civilian world. So uh, last year, thousands of veterans were involved in one of his company's case studies and shared the exact same results. In fact, the program is so successful that the U.S. government is now interested. So to learn more about this program and how it's helping uh, veterans and civilians achieve happiness and deal with their PTSD, you can go to Faith's Magnet. That's F-A-I-T-H-S-M-A-G-N-E-T uh, hyphen T-Y dot G-R, the number eight dot com backslash. Um, and they also have, you can also go to www.faithsmagnet.com. That's faithsmagnet.com. Um, but this is dope um, as a PTSD sufferer, as you know, several of us on here, you know, we all deal with that. Um, I can definitely say that this is 
this really just spoke to me uh, on a more personal level. So um, I'm definitely going to be looking into this and seeing how I can either access this technology or get it to, you know, the people that need it. Because I know my uncle, uh, you know, Uncle Marvin, he was in the military. So he definitely deals with it. And I got other family members that deal with it mm-hmm. and stuff as well. So I definitely want to look into this. And if it's, if it's legit, man, uh, yeah, let, let's get behind this. Mental health is real. And as a sufferer, of it, I, I don't um, support people who are trying to find new innovative ways to help us. Go ahead, Faith. Definitely. Two things. Um, definitely glad you brought that up because any technology to help people through anything dealing with mental health, that's a great piece of technology. And number two, I'm damn gl- glad you spelled that thing out because it sounded like you were saying face. Face is magnet. <laughs> No, not, like, not, right. not something that attracts to the refrigerator and has a picture of face on it smiling, <laughs> doing a disclaimer <laughs> face. Um, no, this is faith magnet, as in you have faith in somebody or faith in God or, you know, faith without works is dead, that type shit. But yeah, faithsmagnet.com. Um, check it out, my people. Um, the next story is Black entrepreneurs are hosting a virtual summit teaching business owners how to increase sales and lead generation. So the Business Help Network comprises successful African-American entrepreneurs, marketers, and digital strategists. It's facilitating a virtual summit that will empower entrepreneurs to accelerate their businesses. The Big Push Q4 Summit will focus on business strategy, growth marketing, SEO and web design, e-commerce, and Shopify. The highly anticipated number November 13th event seeks to educate and inspire business owners to continue to reach the next level of success by delivering profitable results. Some of the speakers that will be included will be Lauren Lacey, the founder of the Urban Urban Big Business Directory, a full service SEO and web design agency and black business directory. Troy Sandage, a global B2B marketing strategist and founder of Strategy Hackers. Snatch Queen CEO, Anika Grandison, successful service-based entrepreneur and SEO strategist, Celeste Williams and retail business strategist, Siobhan Henderson, AKA the real bag lady. So if you're an aspiring entrepreneur looking to take your business to the next level, looking to find that next piece to increase increase your marketing, increase your ability to get your product or service out to customers, um, look into this. It is called, again, the Big Push Q4 Summit. Um, if you got any questions on that, you can visit You can visit their website at businesshelpnetwork.com. That's businesshelpnetwork.com. Um, so, yeah, shout out to these uh, good people for putting this together. Um, as a small business, um, I'm definitely going to be looking into this as well because um, SEO... It's something that is big in our field of podcasting. And uh, so is growth marketing as far as, you know, understanding how to do e-commerce and stuff for the uh, store and for the uh, comic book. So, yeah, man, I'm going to be looking into this. If I can find out a way to get us in there or, or something like that, I'm going to uh, let y'all know about it, brothers. But, yeah, I'm going to look into this. If you're an entrepreneur, <clears throat> big push Q4 Summit, and it's on November 13th, people, November 13th. Our next story from the Queen Bee's Queen Bee herself. Tina Knowles Lawson and Beverly Johnson celebrate (laughs) celebrate the boss net. What was him buzzing? He was no. Was that was that a fart or raspberry? What was that? That was him buzzing. That was his buzz. (laughs) Say Queen Bee. Like, I was like, what? I Had thought it was distortion or something in my head. Bro. I didn't know what that was. Oh, man. Let me start this. <laughs> Put a hex on your whole family. <laughs> Dressing all no black. black like the um, funny enough, <laughs> in this article, Tina knows has on all black, too. But Tina knows Lawson and Beverly Johnson are celebrating the Boss Network's 12th anniversary with the 2021 Ladies That Lead Conference. The Boss Network is an online community of professional and entrepreneurial women who support each other through digital content, 
programs and event-based network. They will continue their 12th anniversary celebration with this highly anticipated Ladies That, Ladies that Lead conference. The annual event, which is geared toward highlighting women of influence who inspire other women by sharing their strategies and journey to success, will take place as a virtual experience for the first time. This is also on Saturday, November 13th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So you might be able to go to this and go to the big push um, if you are an entrepreneur and you are um, a lady that wants to partake in this. Some of the headliners will include businesswoman and philanthropist Tina Knowles Lawson, supermodel and fashion icon Beverly Johnson, retro vase skincare founder Jamie Heidegger, founded by CEO Kamika Smith, and the purpose of the Boss Network is to promote and encourage the small business spirit and career development of women. So if you're a lady out here, if you're one of the uh, queens out here who is a, ladies that, a lady that lead, please go to ladiesthatleadtour.com. That's ladiesthatleadtour.com. And go ahead and register. Um, it's a virtual thing. It's on the 13th of November. So go sign up and salute to Queen Nose Lawson and Queen Johnson for putting this together. And our last story in the positive black news. Brother Steve Harvey and billionaire Robert Smith are teaming up to help HBCU enjoy HBCU students enjoy more freedom. Steve Harvey has always had a soft spot for historically black, black colleges and universities, and now the acclaimed comedian, television host, entrepreneur, and philanthropist is taking his longstanding passion to new heights. Through his Steve and Marjorie Harvey Foundation, an, organiz an organization in which he shares with his wife, dedicated to cultivating the next generation of responsible leaders by providing educational enrichment, mentoring, life transformation skills, and global service initiatives. The foundation has officially signed on as a strategic partner with the Student Freedom Initiative. Founded and held by tech investor and philanthropist Robert F. Smith, a billionaire touted by Forbes as the richest Black person in America, the Student Freedom Initiative provides a vast array of resources aimed at helping higher education students, including attending minority serving institutions, including HBCUs, achieve professional, personal, and financial freedom. The Harvey's participation helps more than triple the number of schools participating in the Student Freedom Initiative from nine to 29, impacting nearly 80,500 students. Access to quality, affordable higher education is one of the most important steps our community can take towards achieving racial equity, says Harvey, a former stand-up comedian and host of long-running television show Family Feud. My team and I are proud to support the work of Robert F. Smith and the Student Freedom Initiative to highlight the outstanding job done by HBCUs and other MSIs to elevate the social and economic mobility of our students to achieve their greatest potential. So look into this, um, that's the student, the Student Freedom Initiative is founded by billionaire uh, Robert Smith. I mean, yeah, that's a, the name is, yeah, billionaire Robert Smith, Robert F. Smith, who's the richest man in America. And you can go to the studentfreedominitiative.org to support or find out more details on the initiative. So far, the institutions included are Alabama A&M, Benedict College, Bennett College, Bowie State University, Dillard University, Fisk University, Interdenominational Theological Center, Jackson State University, Jarvis Christian College, Lemoyne Owen College, Miles College, Morris College, Norfolk State University, Shaw University, Texas College, Texas Southern University, University of Maryland Eastern Shore, University of the Virgin Islands, Virginia Uni University, and Voorhees College. So um, if you're looking to support so they can continue to uh, support more schools, um, again, you can find out more details at studentfreedominitiative.org. So salute to the Kings, Robert L. Smith, and Steve Harvey for supporting Black colleges and universities. And that is the positive Black news that you can use. And um, as I look at Padawan's face on the screen, which is not really a face, but it's a face, it only makes me think of, um, I think it's about that time to face the screen, y'all. 
Face, you ready? Let's face the screen. Yeah, no, it, oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. Now, continuing on my trend for November, where we listen to top five greatest movies of a different black actor every week. This week, I thought I'd pull everybody off and just go to who I feel is pound for pound, if not the greatest black actor, one of the top three greatest black actors of all times, Mr. Denzel Washington. Let's give it up for Denzel. Oh, awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. Denzel Washington. Denzel. I, I can definitely I'm see. With Denzel, yeah. He yeah. is top three of all time. An actress, period. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, coming up with a top five for Denzel was a very meticulous task because his list of movies and shit he's been in is longer than my arm. So, I mean, I had to go with just a random five that I thought would rank good on in everybody's mind except one. One is just my favorite movie of all times that I just had to put in. And I'm going to just throw that in. And I think y'all know which one I'm talking about when I name this movie. But it's still a great movie, though. Now, we're going to go with Fallen is the first one. Fallen was his dab into like horror, a horror mystery genre. Great, great movie. Like Time it's just kind of, mm -hmm. is on my yes. side. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. The end of Left You Wondering. The, the de was a demon. The demon was still living. He oh yeah, cat, it was the cat. The remember, cat he, remember, remember the, the narrator start the story by mm -hmm. saying, "Let me tell you about the time, mm -hmm. I, the time almost I almost died." died. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great, great movie, man. Great that was that, that's a Another good pitch right movie. there. That's a good one to start it off. Oh yeah, that was good to shoot. Next one, Glory. Oh Glory. man. Time piece. Oh man. Great movie. Great, great movie. Brings up a lot of social issues. It is still. I had to watch that um, for high school, I mean, high school history. Yo. The scene with Brings the. Brings up a lot of social issues that's still relevant nowadays. Yo, the movie is classic. The, the scene with the yeah. one tear is fucking one of the oh, best yeah. acting performances I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah. And created the meme. <laughs> he set the bar with that like, one scene. He like, set the bar for bad actors, period. Man. And the funny part is, he's not the lead actor in that movie. Yeah. But he steals exactly. every scene he's in. And that exactly. was young Denzel before he was like known as like G Man. Mm -hmm. And you holding your own with Morgan Freeman and Matthew Broderick, and like you, you holding your own with some powerhouses. Heavy hitters, all heavy hitters, no slouches. Next one, yeah, tugged at my heartstrings, man. This next one really tugged at my heartstrings, and I think it tugged at every person in America heartstrings that had a kid. John Q. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. John Q. Yes, yes. Yeah. What are you willing to do for your well, what just are you willing Boy. to do for your kid? Everybody Boy. say I do anything. Are you willing to take a hospital hostage? Mm-hmm. That was some real shit. Are you willing to go with that oh, man? You feel me? Are you willing to kill yourself for your son and have a have a chance? Today. Are you willing? Like right, right now. now. Are you willing to right it? now, right now? Great, great movies, man. Great, great movies. That movie had me like just tugging on my heart strings. That's one of them almost like pursuit of happiness, y'all. When you, you, you gotta shed a tear, you know. Like, I don't care who you are. You see, you, you watch that movie from beginning to end, you're gonna feel something. And now, it excellently next shows one, how. My um, I, was, I was gonna say, it excellently shows how the medical uh, sure. system shook, treats black folk. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Now, yeah. Next one, my high treat. Why you bullshitting? High treat, folk. Period. If you ain't got money, definitely. Oh, yeah, insurance, ain't, yeah. insurance. Ain't let, sure let, let, let's call the spade a real spade. You don't got insurance. You don't exist there. Mm -hmm. That's that's the real fact. Yeah, that. Now, the next one, my personal favorite movie of all time, The Body Queen. 
it, it gotta be in every list, man. It, it, I'm I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you why I'm mad if you don't have this other movie on here. I'm, I I feel like you still got a slot left on your list, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt right now. But <clears throat> boy, I know you didn't say the Mighty Queen. Yes. O- over fucking. Yes. Oh man. Yes, the Mighty Queen. Yes, the Mighty Queen. I gotta put that in. <laughs> he laced that movie, man. I quit. He laced that movie. You can't deny that's a great movie, man. Well, you can't deny it, but I was gonna great, say, I was gonna movie. say, oh, it's a great oh, movie. Oh, I can deny it. Yeah. Yeah, you can deny it. You can't deny it. Deny. <laughs> that's a great movie. If you haven't seen coming to, if you that haven't seen the mighty, the mighty Queen, go see the Mighty, <laughs> mighty, mighty, mighty Go queen. see it, man. Yes, you look it up. We the are the Queens. Movie. The Next mighty, movie, mighty queen. Training day. Okay, hold on. All right, first of all, all right, okay. First of all, I'm not mad you rounded off your top five of training day. That's a good pick. That That's solid as fuck. You won the Oscar for that. I ain't hating on that. But you mean to tell me you put the mighty queen on there before shit like fences and shit? Malcolm oh. X, nigga. <laughs> I have honorable. Oh mentions. my God! This nigga put the mighty Quinn over. Yes. What? Yes. What? I love that movie, man. Yes. What? The mighty fucking Quinn. Yes. I've been watching that movie more than twenty some years. Damn right. Man. I know that shit. Laughing. Laugh. That shit ranks up there on my list. God damn it. The mighty fucking Quinn. God damn. That's a big <sighs> shit in this list. Boy, that's hard, man. That's crazy. <laughs> that's up there. That's, that's up there. You said Schindler's List. That's up there, guys. Oh, that's up there. I so, love you, bro. Damn, bro. Shawshank, it, it go Mighty Queen, Shawshank Redemption, Schindler's List. It's shit like that. You feel me? The Mighty Queen is up there. Now, honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Malcolm X. This is an honorable blues. mention. Yes. Malcolm X. Mo Better Blues. And a soldier store. Those are my three honorable mentions to my top five Denzel Washington movies. <laughs> now, if you want to debate, feel free to debate. Comments, blow them up. Hey, but those are my Please, top five. Please, somebody else tell this man he tripping Please, by putting crazy. the mighty. You could have put the mighty queen as an honorable mention as like your personal thing or something, but what? you left off what? of Fences, Malcolm X, what? and Mo Better Blues for that what? one. Come on, son. Somebody out okay. there in the comments, please tell it's this okay, man, man. tripping. Leave us a voice it's comment okay. on Anchor. Leave us a comment on YouTube. Somebody tell this man he man. is looking for that. That is Denzel blasphemy. Oh, I'll man. debate anybody on that. I'll debate. Please tell me his what he did. Acting, acting performance was better than that. Please tell me wh- why his acting performance. He was saying. the blues so bad one time it put my face in a permanent frown so what what the well, fuck they had to do with anything because he can because well, he was singing you know how many singing. bad musicals yeah. there are have you done what the hell does that no, matter no, 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 that's not I acting did, that's I a different thing this song. he was acting like he could sing at them it's your opinion. I, I can't argue your opinion, but exactly. we know that it ain't fact. Once again, we ain't gonna state we, that as fact. Oh, that hurts. It, it might be debatable <laughs> with the Mighty Queen. Is it my top five Denzel? God damn it. Oh, it's up there. And this is their face to spray. Don't get shit on the, me. The Mighty Queen gets zero tears faces. <laughs> 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 Shit, Alonzo man. versus Quinn. Oh, yeah, man. No, he put Alonzo on there. I ain't mad at training day like that. That makes sense. Like, that's his Oscar winning performance. Like, so I, I feel like the actor performance is great enough in the movie to warrant it. But boy, that's some that's some real personal shit there. That's definitely some. That's just in his heart. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> oh boy, that nigga said like, up there with Schindler's I'll List. I'll Denzel on that shit. It's up there, man. It's a great fucking movie, man. 
I make everybody watch that. If you ever use a face, come to a face to screen <laughs> to not what? necessarily represent the partners. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to just everybody roll with knows it. If you really fuck with face and you've ever been to any residence of mine, you've watched the Mighty Quint with me <laughs> at least one time. Everybody I think is. I was this nigga said he has some better Everybody acting is, performance because yeah. he's singing. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, that's when you it's know it's just off the love. Bad. When you pull some shit like that out your head, that's just the love. That ain't nothing you but the love. Ain't, that, Queen. that ain't even a rational Classic argument. <laughs> the Mighty <laughs> Queen came out in 19, 1989. It wasn't, you know, you know, it was a rise in black stars in 1989. You know, he he felt he could relate to the movie because he saw another black face, which was, you know, rare com- compared to now. Yeah, all I'm gonna say is this, well, fellas. Um, Pod Squad, y'all out there are gonna let us know what y'all feel about the list and give us your list as well. What's your top five Denzel movies? of all time. The man does have a hell of a damn catalog to choose from. So put your post exactly. your top five exactly. and let's let's debate it. And answer this question. This will be the question of the week on uh on anger. Does the mighty Quinn deserve to be on the list above movies like Malcolm X, uh movies like yeah, Fences, boy. movies like Mo Better Blues. Damn, Mo Better Blues. Y'all Damn let us right. know down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Damn. Damn right. Not mad at it the debate. Sure Not mad at the debate. Book of Eli. Yeah. Sure but I t- oh, Eli. man. Damn. Oh, man. Boy, yeah. I tell you, man. This, yeah. 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 this list was the yeah. definition of some good and fuckery, man. I tell you that. That that was it. It was the real light, good. And the then that damn the plan light. reared its mighty. Okay. It's it's mighty bullshit ass head and it just t- totally you should have known. You, you should have known when I said Denzel, you go, you was going to hit a mighty queen. You you knew you was going to hit it, bro. That's like saying Denzel, that's like saying that's queen. that's like giving. All right, this is my top five NBA players, y'all. I'm gonna give you Shaq. I'm gonna give you Jordan, and then I'm gonna throw LeBron in there, and then I'm gonna throw Magic in there, and then you got Javaris Critton. Like what, nigga? Jamel McGee. Yes, no, no, no. yeah, yes. <laughs> Joe, that, that was a Jamel McGee moment. That was one of them. Like, yeah, nigga, you went to high school with that nigga, or you just—that's your brother. You you cousins with food. him on the low. Shacking he he slid you a ten stack Shacking on the, the low to promote him. So like, it's some shit there. You ain't just. That ain't no rational thought. That's just some. I really love this guy. I don't give a damn. That's that. That's some shit that I would have said about like Jay-Z and some shit. Hey man, you know, like, like I I, I get it. The fandom came out there. Like he, <laughs> he couldn't help it. I think it's because he was saying it. <laughs> he was saying his ass off in that movie, man. Shit. I'm done, bro. I, 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 I quit. <laughs> that is hilarious. Hell no. Oh, get this John man. Legend on. Get this John Legend on before it was John Legend. Um, um, <laughs> I'm gonna roll with it. <laughs> Pod squad, y'all let us know what's up. Uh, tell you, man. But as Yo, I was, uh, as I was laughing, um, I did take a look at the clock, y'all, and it's that time. Huh? It is. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? Time is- to rock and roll. Oh shit! Did this nigga come out with a guitar? What did this nigga got props this week? Oh, this is about to be a good one. Oh, this is about to be a, ain't no ain't no looping pet this week. Hell no, nah. this nigga came with a guitar. He got a guitar, y'all. Uh, and yes, yes, I said like that. It's guitar. Yes, guitar. Guitar, guitar, boy. From country. This nigga, I did not expect to see this nigga pull out. The fucking Stratocaster 9000. This nigga came out like <laughs> Bob Marley about the same redemption song. 
I think I need to tune one of these strings, though. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, some was off. I guess the fact that you, time. this nigga got props this week. I'm done. I, am talking, that, I love the I love the commitment to the to the presentation. Can you play that motherfucker? No. Oh, I was about to be like, yo, hey, I want to learn how to play that shit too. Oh, I you know who know how to play? I'm thinking about giving me a cheap acoustic jump from like a thrift shop, thrift shop or something. Mm-hmm. I think I'll be all the rage at the parties and whatnot. Boy, I'm but gonna tell you, if I learn how to play the it's guitar, hot. it's a rap. It's a rap. I that I'm 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 making the intro song to the show. We about to have a whole new level of production. We about to have live music breaks. We about to be like the new 85 South. We about to have song breaks and shit. It's about to be a rap. Don't let me learn. Take how it back. To it is Don't crazy. let me take learn back, how to play no fucking triangle. keyboard Damn. or no guitar. Damn. Nigga. Triangle back, nigga. Yeah, I ain't you know, trying to have I ain't trying to be doing the show from behind no damn trap set. So I ain't about to bring out no drums and shit. I ain't about to do all that. Yeah, I was <laughs> with the drum show. Bing, trap bing, set. Bing. I was I was getting with the trap set when I was young. They gave me a trap set for Christmas. Used to play drum on that song. Um, yeah, when I had the trap set when I was younger, but you know, okay, man, you know, you them. know, you know, me and Face was on the drum line in high school. Yeah, yeah, I remember y'all said that too. I was but when I got in high school, yep. moms wanted both to... self-taught while reading the liquor damn music. Yep. Nope. We was Nick Cannon's before Drumline hit. Like when that movie came out, I was like, did this nigga know us? <laughs> Cause legit. Legit, my first, my only, my only real scholarship offer to uh, school at first was a band scholarship. At first, uh, HU wanted me to come play in the band, but I was thinking about the workload. And after pre college, I was I turned it down and went for the science grant that I had uh, written in. But yo, that damn, uh, yeah, like nigga couldn't play shit. Nigga couldn't read shit. I say, but we played our ass off. We was beasts. We did a lot of shit in the band. One day we'll talk about the uh the time we uh staged a lock in to get rid of our band director. But uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. that we, we, we've been revolutionary for a long time, man. This shit ain't new to this. We ain't new to this. We true to this shit. Oh but yeah, man. uh proceed, my bad, man. I think it's time. I think it's time. What time is it? Fuckery time. <laughs> 51. Good and fuckery. That was random. (laughs) All right. (laughs) This nigga. (laughs) All right. Well, we're going to start it off with. You have um, to do the whole good and fuckery with the guitar, man. You know that, right? Oh, you can't just break no new shit out and then just, no, fuck that nigga. That's a part of the show now. Oh, yeah. You never know. Uh, I might come out. Wait till this podcast get real big and we get a studio and we doing this shit live every week. Oh, nigga. I'm going to look like Teddy Riley in the verses. (laughs) Hopefully our Wi-Fi don't do like his. Hopefully by yeah, that time exactly. we done fixed all of our tech issues and videos played on, <laughs> on time and sound stays working. <clears throat> but that's neither here nor there. I digress. Yeah. Well, neither here nor there. Matter of fact, near there where you live, Tiz. Uh oh, we got some. <laughs> we got some Georgia fuckery. Yep. Yep. No. Oh well, we starting off with some Georgia good. Oh Georgia shit! Good. Now, what oh, we got good going yeah. on? We love smoking that Georgia good. Anyway, uh, T.I. Good T.I. news. Actually bought his Atlanta hood. Now he's spreading affordable housing throughout Bankhead. When you like, say he bought the hood, like he bought like all the houses on the block type shit? He's, buy, he's buying real estate in um, his old hood or whatever. He um, November 3rd. Uh, T.I. and Tiny, they took a trip around old Bankhead, scope mm-hmm. out his new affordable housing development. Mm-hmm. Um, says it's a development includes 143 units, a community garden, community oh, center, and a greenhouse. Shit. All right. <clears throat> Salute, too. So, yeah. 
That's how you in go my back. And, voice. That's how you go back and give back to your block, man. Salute to the king. The king mm-hmm. got the side. So in my TI voice. So yeah, checking on my development here in, <laughs> in Bankhead. You know what I'm saying? That's what he said on Instagram. <laughs> I ain't oh, about to man. do all that. Yeah, I was gonna say you was I, like a mixture of New York and Chicago mm-hmm. and no, nah, the way they wrote yeah, it up man. here just looked like he said it like that. But I not a, when I started, I was like, you know what? I would sound, like <laughs> I would sound more like he's reaction. To me. So, so, so yeah. Checking <laughs> on my development here in Banky. <laughs> he would sound extra proper. <laughs> that was but yeah. I got you. Yeah, doing some good. He's doing some good. <laughs> Um, but you know, next on the list or whatever, you know, um, we were talking about the uh, the yay interview and whatnot. And yes, sir, uh, so, you can check so out our November, reaction to that live on YouTube. Yeah. You can see it now, right now, right now, right now on the partners, T H G P O D N A S. All of our anyway. li- all of our listeners, go check us out on YouTube too. So, on the eleventh month. In the on the eleventh day of the eleventh month, twenty twenty one, Drink Champs are going to release part two of the interview. Hold on, that's stuff that we missed. There's part two. There's a part two to that's the Thursday, correct? Yes. Okay, I might have to pull up on that Thursday evening. We don't <laughs> oh shit, that might change my whole schedule around for Thursday night. All right, mm-hmm. good to know. Oh, okay. <clears throat> And, it, and at the end of the interview, it felt like they just cut it off. They didn't, it didn't feel like it really was the end of the interview anyway. So I, I kind of felt like it was going to be a part two or something down the line anyway. <clears throat> but but um, along with that, then uh, Kanye released a video with Jay Prince uh, calling huh. for a truce with, with Drake uh... to him. To help in the releasing of Larry Hooper out of prison. <clears throat> so, I there's I a couple ways I want to take that, but like I could go the route of did Jay Prince pressure this nigga? Did he did he put the did he put the Prince pressure on him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, or is Kanye just really that serious about this Hoover thing? Because I have heard heard him talk about this initiative to get Hoover uh, released and stuff. He even talked about it on his album, so. He's been saying it for a while. Like mm-hmm. um, he's really been pressed for it for a while. I think um, even uh, Kim put her her part in. Yeah. Um, try to get him about. So, so uh, I mean, I, I ain't mad. I, I ain't gonna never be mad at peace. So respect to that. Either, either way, I think this would be a good example of. All right, I might not fuck with you like that, but there's a bigger. We can come goal. together for a bigger cause. Yeah. Yeah, oh, wow. and we need. We need more examples of that in the black community because we don't have examples of that in the black community. Nope. That's real. Not for real. Mm-hmm. Not for real. Hey, you know. you so you uh, from so <laughs> you I hate I hate the transition into the fuckery with Do it, know, such a positive word, Why but not? let me transition like in with some of the fuckery parts. Of a pause of Kanye's beef that I found interesting along the way. Okay. Um, so randomly, I've been watching. I I watched um, a Rory and Maul interview with Hit Boy. They still and, around? Yeah, <laughs> they, they got okay. a whole new deal, man. They got a million dollar deal. Like I, I think it's like a ten million dollar deal with someone or whatever. They go ahead, new and they Rory do- and Maul. And they actually do, they doing a lot of interviews with like artists. Like they did a one with Alchemist. Um, this time, how are the Boy. interviews? Um, well, tell I you seen just it. like this is the first one I've seen. But was it good? Yeah, I mean, for the most part, Hit Boy. He, I mean, as far as interviews or whatever, like um, they always been like good with interviews, even when on the Joe Button show. So okay, yeah, so it was pretty good. So and then with that. <clears throat> It revealed a lot to me um, at the same time. So, you know, Ye said the comment about Big Sean um, being the worst um, thing he could have done was signing him or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then all of that 
um, you know, Big Sean replied back with a picture of him saying, I just saw you or whatever. And then um, I also, you know, remember uh, when we were talking about it on the YouTube, you can watch it now. T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S on YouTube right now. You can watch our reaction to the uh, drink chance. <clears throat> but when I was talking um, at the reaction, I brought up Sean, um, brought out an EP with Hit Boy or whatever. And, you know, he, he kind of slightly um, addressed his issues with good music or whatever, saying that it didn't feel like a click anymore or whatever. But now after watching the, the interview with Hit Boy, it kind of brings things it kind of brings things together because Hit Boy and Kanye has a beef or whatever. And um I know I remember Didn't I know that Hit, I remember Hit Boy. All right. Kanye made a Nas album, if y'all remember way back. Wasn't well received. It was like maybe two songs, I maybe a few songs that I actually might have kept on my rotation for a bit or whatever then there's rumors that Nas has another album out after that or whatever and it's produced by Hit Boy and uh, the past I think it was like a couple of months ago or whatever uh, Hit Boy was like "All right, see we got Grammys we did all this acclaim or whatever and we didn't have to do all this um salacious stuff like you you know how like Kanye's just been doing crazy stuff just to promote his album and things like that whatever uh -huh. so that was like that was the first hint of there was a beef or whatever and then on the on the interview he was basically saying that Kanye was blackballing him he was like telling other people not to mess with him and stuff like that um okay yeah, so gotcha. like, <clears throat> yeah, I know I'm building up or, or whatever, but in the interview, he was basically saying that it, he blackballed him the whole time, and and that's why he said the things that he was said while he was inebriated about, hey, I pushed this album and got more acclaim than Kanye, and I didn't even have to do all these antics to boost it up. It just did it naturally, or whatever. Gotcha. So, so now you got put that into play. <clears throat> Hit Boy's making a bigger, a more and more of a name for himself. He's making like a lot of classics lately. And now, after Sean drop, uh, basically uh, leaves good music and he's starting something with Hit Boy and they have this whole album, and it's like, all right, I'm starting to see where, I'll say, I'm starting to see where things might be getting a little funny between Sean, but it is not, I'm still doing my detective work on it because I don't know, it kind of interests me because it just- Two hours later. Just seems so weird that they, out of the blue, uh, Sean leaves good music and then out of the blue, just Kanye says, he's the worst thing I ever done was signing him or whatever like it has to be something that happened or whatever like it, it just seems real weird it but, seems yeah. like there's something definitely behind the scenes going on there yeah uh -huh. I just like to I, I just like to see how people act behind the scenes because you know Kanye like you said in the um, reaction he acts like he's the victim the whole time or whatever and then at the same time he does things do things like this at the same time preaching against. So. Yeah, it, it's some it's some shit behind the scenes that is at the root of all of this shit that, that, that we ain't privy to just yet. Mm -hmm. But damn but, shit. Uh, he might be getting, he might feel like he got some, a little bit of competition with, because uh, they used to work with each other. They worked with, um, on Watch the Throne. I think, matter of fact, they did Niggas in Paris together. Him mm. and Kaya. Whatever. And he That's even a hit said boy? that, yo. I didn't know that was a hit boy. Yeah, hit boy. Um, he was talking about it in the interview. He was said, um, he even um he even said I, you know, I love bro. I he's like one of the reasons why uh Hit Boy is producing. Cause when he started producing, that's when Kanye came out, like 2003 
or whatever, and he wants to, you know, if 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 there was a ever a chance, he will have like a sit down with him to see where the things fuck up at, pretty much. But yeah, it's it's kind of weird. All right, <clears throat> the world of yeah. Mm-hmm. Way more deep into the fuckery. Next on the list. A teacher just got fired for asking Trump to deport undocumented students. A Texas high school teacher who thought she was a pri- she was private messaging anti-immigration tweets to pre- President Donald Trump has been fired for asking the president to deport undocumented students. Um, she says Fort Worth. SD is loaded with illegal students from Mexico. Georgia Cold blooded son of a bitch. Said in a series of tweets on May 17th, I really do need a contact here in uh, Fort Worth who should be actively investigating and removing illegals that are in the public school system. Clark has been a high school English teacher in the Fort Worth Independent School District since 1998. And this, and this need to be the last year she <clears throat> she works in a, in a school system. She, yeah. People like that ain't supposed to be around kids. View that hateful. Yeah. Like, God damn, it's kids. Get her ass out of there. Get her ass out of there. It's, I got this from CNN and like they go mm. deep into it. She like called a group of kids, uh, little, what is it, little Mexico or something like that. And I was like, oh, yeah, you got to get out of here. You you got to get out of here. Yeah, we need her job. Mm-hmm. We got her name. Yeah, Georgia Clark. Georgia, Georgia Clark, Clark. We need your job. Uh, yeah. But what what state is this in? Texas. Can you be surprised? Oh, no, see, yeah, that's tough though. But that's <clears throat> a lot of their government and should be be riding the weird. Mm-hmm. Oh so mm-hmm. no, that's tough. Though. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And, and more related fuckery, man, pray for Virginia because now we're a red state again. I voted, but yeah. Glenn Youngkin. It's the, it's the, yeah. it, it, see, it, that's that be the problem, yo. It be the mid-year elections. It's never the mm-hmm. the full four year, four year ones. It's the midterms that's always messing us up. Mm-hmm. And But do you know what, though? It don't even matter because at the end of the day, Biden ain't really did a whole lot that he said he was gonna do. He he's pretty much done nothing for us anyway. So at this point, like, do it really matter who in all, like? Ain't, mm-hmm. I'm, both both I'm, parties have failed us. So I'm I'm, I'm at the point like, man, I, I'm I'm about so <laughs> over fucking politics. Too. You know how I felt about Biden. No, you know man. how I felt before the, the before the election and everything. Um, but. I, I have been looking at some videos or whatever. I think uh, I saw a video with Charlemagne the guy. He was talking to um, one of Biden's cabinet or whatever about things. I, I send a video to y'all, but I, I do want to bring up that topic along the line where, where all right, are they really, are they doing anything? If they are doing anything, why are they not saying anything about it and being more vocal or whatever? But um, yeah, but will you were going to say faith? I don't even fuck with <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shit, you good? Shit. I forgot you. You you were smoking. So oh. <laughs> of course, <laughs> long winded Larry threw your shit off. <laughs> My name is Larry. Why, Pat? <clears throat> oh man. Uh well let, let me go ahead and continue the fuckery in in Virginia. Uh because this next one is some fuckery. <laughs> I'll get this laugh out because he after he came in and <laughs> after you came back to start laughing that shit. It should just put, it's just funny looking at you come back. <laughs> but anyway, all right, let me get serious. <clears throat> oh man. All right, yeah, no, no, this is serious. 
Two hours later. All right. A Virginia Beach pastor is arrested in a large solicit, uh, solicitation for a prostitution ring. Sting. I can't even talk. I can't even. It was talk. girls or boys? Oh, he laying hands on them holy cheeks. <laughs> he was wrong, man. He was wrong. <laughs> but man, this is this is like a statewide <laughs> operation. <laughs> the B selection from the quiet doing the collection is bands make them dance, bands make them dance, and the choir be coming down. All right. <laughs> with that... choir robes with the back out. <laughs> oh, you thought this was a black church. This is not a black church. This one of them. <laughs> See that white man? Oh. <laughs> That's the pastor. So no, nah, their shit, that shit is more like uh <laughs> their uh collection play this. Pour some sugar on me. <laughs> Oh, I oh love God. rock and roll. So put another quarter in the jukebox, baby. Or whatever coin it is they put in the jukebox. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it started off in a jukebox in Chesterfield <laughs> County, Virginia. <laughs> Why it had to be 70... the 804? Damn. I just knew it was minutes. one. I just knew it was down there by you, Pat. No, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's, I'm trying man. to tell you, it's a statewide thing. That's why I'm trying to make awareness to it so y'all Damn can it. look out for these. Hey, man, I don't live there no more. <clears throat> oh, so, I don't have to worry about them twerking at my church. My church is, <laughs> is a lot more settled. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody out here. Ain't, ain't nobody mud <laughs> wrestling in the baptismal pool at my church. <laughs> but our Virginia listeners be what? Be they well. sell an ass from the pulpit. Jesus. Mm-mm. I'm dying. <laughs> so the white man looking like Opie. <laughs> Sitting there looking all innocent. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. I don't know where they got those damn thongs from. That wasn't me. I watch the 700 Club <laughs> every weekend. Yo. You know who I believe would do some shit like that? Y'all ever seen that dude, Kenneth Copeland? I think that's his name. It's like some Copeland. Um, and he, I, they, yeah. He inside yeah. edition did some shit on him where he was looking, and he was like buying a new plane or some shit. And he got like an airport yeah. next to his house and all this kind yeah, of crazy shit. Yeah, he said he can't, he can't um, he ride on commercial team. planes. Yeah, because uh, it's like a the, tube the full of demons. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah that nigga, his, I could see him doing his, some shit like that. He looked, he looked no, like he, he got looked selling like, ass. Or buying he it. Looked like, he looked like he's possessed by some demons. That's when he makes facial expressions, he looked like he looked like a spawn character. He looked just he looked like some perverted preacher spawn character. And we gonna rebuke you demons. So I, I speak out the against the spirit of COVID-19. COVID-19. He did say that. He did say that. Boy, <laughs> have you seen the remix? When they mix oh, that shit no. up. Oh, man. That shit is a oh, good time. Oh, God. That shit is a good time. Check it out. That when you dude get said, I'm going to shout COVID-19. COVID-19? Like he's going to talk to a virus. <laughs> Freaking virus. They need to get All the right, IRS on his ass let him talk to a tax lawyer. Something. Something. Oh, yeah. Let, all right. So... All right, 17 men who range in the age of 24 to 51 were charged with crimes related to an online chatting operation run by uh, Chesterfield Police Special Victims Detectives. So basically, they set themselves up like they were like, like young teenagers on the chat line to set them up. And they came, they set up like a date one day. And then that's how they got them pretty much oh damn so said 51 year old john d blanchard was arrested 
and yeah, right. and and charged with felony solicitation, prostitution. I already said that, and use of a vehicle to promote prostitution. Rock Church International is located off Kempsville Road. I was just at Kempsville Road not too long ago too. <laughs> Oh, this wow. weekend. That's, that's, Yo, this... that's 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 how crazy it is. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. On their well, website, Blanchard... right along mm-hmm. your path, huh, buddy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Y'all not gonna set me up because <laughs> I don't got nothing to do with that. Right along Kipsville uh... Road, huh, buddy? Mm-hmm. Go out there oh, selling that coot now. Nah, I ain't selling none of you that. You selling man. that? I'm just saying how close to home. You selling <laughs> that? Close to home, man. Pat got poon for sale. No, I do not. That's no, what they I call him on them back n- roads of, of of Virginia. He be riding down, you know, them back roads. They call him Poon Pat. No, they he do got not. It for cheap. I don't got nothing. He to do got it for him. cheap. Seventeen five ain't got shit on him. They call Jeezy the snowman, call Pat the whole man. No, no, no. Pat has oh nothing to do God. with that. No. All right. <laughs> and, and they talking about 17.5. These are different type of 17.5s, and I don't have nothing to do with that. And I deplore that, and this is <laughs> this is evil. <laughs> Fuck, man, you will not have my name uh, with this. Pat the home. whole man? Yeah. <laughs> Pat the whole man. I like Christmas. Plus, I got hoes, man. Y'all keep I don't even up. like y'all niggas slow, man. <laughs> I don't even like holidays. I don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> I, I oh, hate holidays. Fudge I can't stand them. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sorry, man. I, I can't help it. It's the, the, the comedy overrides the conscious a lot of times with me. I can't help it. It's funny to me. I gotta <laughs> go with it until it until it goes away. It's a thing. It's like fine. Man, they busted a lot of people. One, two, three. No, seriously, though. That is some crazy shit that dude. (laughs) Virginia Beach. Hustling Richmond. Chesterfield. Richmond. Chesterfield. Chesterfield. Henrico. Kearney Thomas better go get down. He can I don't know where he can add that to his personal prayer package. Graysonville, Maryland. Henrico, Chesterfield, Prince George, Chesterfield, Jesus, Petersburg. Jesus, still name is it is. Oh, Petersburg. Petersburg, Petersburg. Richmond, Richmond. Why Westbury. you had to say my shit twice? Damn it. Only, <laughs> I'm only saying that. <clears throat> you the one just came from Kempsville. I'm, I'm only saying how many times. Each time I said a, a, a city is how many times, is how many people was on that list, like. Well, oh. um, I wonder what your boy. Oh boy, that be talking like this. I wonder if he would, what he would have to say about these passes out here selling poo. Yeah, y'all know y'all going to hell out here selling that coon noon. Uh, no idea. Pack. Poon pack. Got it. Got them poon pack. Got them poon packs. I don't got no poon packs. I don't got no poon bat. All I listen to is boom bat. <laughs> My name ain't poon packs. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> poon packs. I ain't got no. Poon oh, I'm sorry. Packs. I'm done. I'm done. All right, so my last bit of fuckery for the night, man. Y'all have have y'all been keeping up on this Travis Scott Astro World concert craziness? Somewhere, somewhere. Yo, yo, that shit was a murder scene. Yeah. So many people either died or got hurt. They like basically face uh if you ain't fully filled in. He had a huge concert, was like 50,000 people, sold out crowd and shit. And mm. these motherfuckers, like Festival. he got a, yeah, they say he got a history of like raging at his festivals, which is like mosh pits and like storm mm-hmm. the barricade type mentality. So the people started off the show wrong. 
they stormed the entrance to get in. So bad people was just rushing the metal detectors and shit rushing in. People was getting trampled already there. Then during the show, people were literally like mosh pitting and people were like dying on the floor and people was like taking videos. Like it's a video out. It's like a dude recording pans over like to the left or the right and it's a person laid out dead. The, the mm. paramedics is like doing CPI mm. on them or whatever, you, but you could tell them mother gone. And then you pan back and there's some girl talking about something. Woo! So like, it, it, looked, it looked like some demonic <sighs> shit the way people was acting in that crowd, yo. It, it was sick, yo. Like, they was trampling yes. folks, stomping on folks. They like were, people was passing out and dying just because they couldn't get out of the crowd. People was like literally like screaming, like, let me out. People won't move in. Like it was ridiculous, yo. That shit just Yeah, that it wasn't I was like they were ill prepared for this. Like, like um uh, like they said it was like about thirty thousand more people than it could actually have in capacity. See, that's um, the problem already. It was like... You didn't um, have enough security. Said, nothing. Mm-hmm. Said eight people died and some um, 25 were treated at the hospitals um, November 5th. Um, what else? I've seen videos where they try to climb the like where the cameramen were. It was like, yo, stop the show, stop the show came out or whatever and yeah, it was like, like they had video where it looked like Travis was looking at everything but when I look at like how big the stadium you're is, not like seeing the, everything that's going on out there on no the and then like you can't view, blame him once it just the shit looked started. like a bunch of stuff yeah. like I seen a lot of people out there trying to like blame him once the shit started like he should have known mm-hmm. and did something no, once, yeah. once you on stage like you can't yeah, hear like nothing. like yeah. I've been on stage on on way 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 smaller crowds, and once you up there, like you can't really see pe- like outside of the very front faces. row. It's not a lot you really can really focus on. All you at see one time. is bodies. You're not seeing faces. Yeah, you know especially saying? in a. I can imagine, especially in a crowd that fucking that massive. big. The yeah. problem that I will blame him for though is the energies you put out are the energies you will attract. He has Mm -hmm. a history of at concerts telling people, let's rage, fuck the security, move past them, tear the barricade down, rush the stage, climb off of shit. Had another uh, thing where the dude was like on a balcony and the dude jumped off and is now paralyzed because he was up on the balcony and he up there looking at the dude like, I see you up there, you gonna jump? Like shit like that. So when you build that culture in your fan Mm -hmm. base, they are following that energy. Like, there are certain things that I don't try to perpetuate in the way I interact with people because I don't want that energy to be around me because I know where it can go. And when you're perpetuating like an anarchist type of vibe, like a yeah, let's everybody get violent and fuck shit up and tear shit up, then shit like this is going to happen because it's one thing when you're doing that in a club and it's like 200 people in that club got enough people there, security there to support that and you know what I mean? It might be more of a mixed crowd, so all of them ain't specifically there for you. But when you got a concert for you, that means it's 50,000 other people that you specifically speak to. They're going to follow whatever you're li- like. It, it was a reason groups back in the day, like uh, Three Six Mafia or back in the day, Pastor Troy and certain shit, they couldn't come to certain places because when they came, it was a certain energy of like, we about to wild yeah. the fuck out. <clears throat> Yeah, there was they, a time they, when we when I went to the club knowing like, yeah, we probably gonna get put out this bitch because that was just the vibe of everybody at that time. Like that was the yeah. general vibe of the music, the environment. So like, what I will say is, it was less people in the club back then that was not of that ilk. So like, the music didn't make people do it, but more people that was already on that vibe gravitated toward the club back then yeah. that was already on that vibe. Like more, you saw more thugs in the club. Like now I feel like you see more ballers in the club because that's the vibe. Before that, mm-hmm. it was more people that's kind of go to the club to dance and get their groove on because that was the vibe and party. Mm-hmm. So I feel like for like, so I feel like the vibe of his show is 
let's tear everything up for security. Let's push. Let's move. Let's mosh pit. Let's rage. Let's climb on Rave. shit that's not necessarily safe, but like just throw all inhibitions to the side. So when you set that as the environment, that's what you gonna I was, get. You I gotta say tone any, down, brother. Anywhere where you're gathering thousands of people at one spot, one small area, there's a risk. Period. I don't care if they're going there for Kanye Sunday service. Anywhere you get that, it might be less of a risk because that's a calmer vibe. That's of course. That's a calmer vibe or whatever. Now, the way his whole um, his whole uh, stage setup and everything was set up, it looked pretty kind of demonic out I put that in there, like you, it's you, a vibe, kind of pretty much. Certain vibe. Now, of course, that's pretty much any vibe of any rock, rock and roller, as we know. <laughs> pretty much, as that's, that's pretty much every, every all the rock and rollers. We're not going to burn this motherfucker down. Yeah, whatever. Face is just laughing because yes. I said burn something down. But you know what anyway. I noticed? You know what the difference is, though? Mm-hmm. A lot of the rock and rollers that have those type of shows do not have these type of venues or events. True. A lot of them are more at your smaller or your smaller yeah, venues or they're at louder outdoor places where it's more space. People aren't packed as much and corralled as much. It's more of like, mm. they might be on this stage, but it's four other stages, so people are more dispersed. You know what I mean? Like the venues that are just for them, usually it's a little bit smaller, mm. more contained, more controlled. Also, last two points I'll say is, there's an issue there. I, I saw Abba and Preach where they were saying Live Nation has like a history of having these type of um incidents at their events so there's something that needs to be looked into with them as an event company maybe it's the vendors they're using to set up the stages and the whatever maybe it's the security companies they're using maybe it's the maybe they're a little too maybe cheap it, around the edges yeah maybe maybe it's some corners or something being cut that could you could put some more money into it and, and maybe fix this but it's definitely something there but I will say to the young brother Travis, you need to tone your rhetoric down as far as how you're presenting at your concerts. Like the music can be about whatever, but it's people out there that have some raging, some raging type music, that heavy metal type music, that music that make people get fired up, but they're not having these incidents happen. So it's a certain vibe. It's a difference between me saying rage, have a mosh pit, than me saying all you, all y'all security don't do shit. Fuck that. Everybody rush them now. Five foot. Like me giving you the, that, that's the same thing as like me, like I'm giving you a directive to do some dangerous shit. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, as opposed to my music just hyping you up to the point where you might be, then it becomes like more just individuals. But when you're giving <laughs> directives, now you're like speaking to the mass to like everybody do this weird shit that only three people might have been doing. So that's like where it gets dangerous. So I think he needs to tone it down, but I will salute him for saying he's going to pay for the funeral expenses and you know what I'm saying? Oh, and he reimbursed everybody's um, right. tickets too. Right. I, I definitely respect that. At least he's taking accountability for it. I, I think that's big because a lot of young people in his generation They're reckless at the have, mouth. Or they may have doubled down on what happened. <clears throat> like, fuck that. That's just what it is. So I, I respect that he <clears throat> does take accountability for his part in it. But yeah, it, it, it was just a tragedy, man. Rest in peace to those people who lost their life. Uh, prayers and, and and get well soon to those people who are hurt and may have lifetime injuries from that. And just, yeah, man, we got to be a little more, like, fun can't override intellect, man. Like, it can't be where you lose all mm-hmm. inhibitions. And, <clears throat> yeah. And yeah, and don't bring 10 year olds to a, a, a freaking festival. Hold on, what? What's wrong with y'all? It was yeah, a 10 year old. Like, 
There was kids. Yeah. They they brought kids to festivals and stuff like that, man. Don't be doing nah, that, that's man. Just, that's stupid. That's just that's just that is not the environment for a child. No, I, I I I'm oh. not even gonna hate on like a 16, 17 year old. They're a little older. They're a little more mature. They, <laughs> they they might have their wits about them, depending on their maturity level. I can see that, but like a child, you talking about anything younger than me than sixteen? If you can't drive a car by yourself mm-hmm. legally, yet I, I I can't trust you in something that crazy of an environment. And and the other reason why they shouldn't have them because mm-hmm. they said there was somebody walk um walking around injecting people with drugs. Jesus. Like injecting them with sedatives, like stab. Like they said, um, a security guard was passed out, and they looked at his neck, and it, and it was like um, somebody Michael Morbius his neck with a needle or something, and then they found sedative in it. What man, the hell? Just, why is that fun, people? On. Why with party people? Why is that fun? For how is that fun? Mm. I don't want to go like. I'm down with Burning Man type shit and all that where it'd be more like free love and and peace. But like, I've even been to raves, but a lot of raves are safer. A lot of raves, they take that shit so seriously because it is about the experience that they like have like stations set up to make sure you're hydrated. They have like people making sure that like if somebody's not doing well, they can get them help. Like I've Mm -hmm. I've seen, I've been to raves where it's like you can feel it's kind of safe getting your jam on like cuz there it's more it's not so much about the violence yeah. of it it's more about the experience of the music and everybody being on that one accord and vibing you know what i mean but this shit, shit is like i'm telling you to wild out be violent rage go against the security rush the stage all at once like i'm telling oh. you to do that type of environment just got to chill like that's just yeah and don't bring no kids to no adult shit. Like, that's just stupid. I don't mean to call nobody stupid, but that action is very stupid. Very stupid. Very, very, very. Oh, boy. Um, yeah. but, uh, but to end out the shit. fuckery, um, I did want to loop back around to a story from earlier this week when we was talking about Will and Jada. Um, and Pat was very okay. concerned um, this past week on episode 50. Leave Will Smith alone out on all podcast platforms that you probably listen to right now or it's on YouTube. Um, but you can you can breathe easy, young Padawan. Mm-hmm. Your boy Will Smith is about to get his retribution in the public eye. He is he said he was on a Oprah show and he was doing an interview with her and he was talking about a new book that he's gonna be releasing that he's gonna be talking about all of his infidelities. And um, and all of his uh, entanglements. So um, it w- it won't necessarily be leaving Will alone, but Will will get his his day in the sun to have his red table talk out there for publication. So uh, it's coming soon, Pat. We got you. We got you. We ain't gonna let your boy Will Smith go down like that. Oh man, yo, you know what? It's too late. It's gone. I was about to say, man, y'all both. Will Jada, y'all both need to just shut the fuck up. Nope. Just, as nope. Is, shut the fuck I'm up. I'm telling you, that's how they, they like this, Pat. This is not a, a big thing. They up. like <clears> it. <throat> this nigga was on oh, was talking about, oh, this is the lie of the century right here, yo. Fellas, I don't know how do you gonna work this out with your black queen, because I can't see this ever being some shit that I can say to my woman without her either socking the shit out of me or immediately packing up all of her shit and leaving. Um, but uh, this fool said they are a hundred percent together and a hundred percent free. That's the line of the century. Y'all use that out there. See how that works for y'all, man. I ain't never heard of. So if the polygamist and and people that's trying to convince your woman to do some wild shit or have an open relationship, that you throw that out there with the great Will Smith, the great genie, <laughs> and said it so. But that was the line of the interview Ooh. to me. But you check that out. It's on. Like... I can't remember the exact name of the uh, platform, but it's on uh, interviews. Uh, let me let me tell y'all how y'all can find this. She is knit. Hold on. I, I, I'm gonna I'm 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 hold y'all down, Pop Spot. I'm gonna make sure y'all y'all can get this too because it was funny to me. Uh, it was Will on Oprah's. Two freaks. Uh, got emotional one time. 
It was on Will's Talk with Oprah. What is the name of the Oprah interview? I can't just look up Oprah interview with Will Smith. It pops right up. But uh, yeah, he talked about a lot of shit on there. But the Will and Jada shit just, I was like, oh, how how did you do this to me, podcast gods? You you brought this right back around full circle. Padawan was very concerned about Will. And look at Will. He right there. To, he going to get his jabs back. So I ain't he will not no be more. out he here. pull out a whole book. Shut the fuck up, Will. Shut the fuck up, Jada. <laughs> all right? Y'all both nasty. Y'all nasty as hell. Y'all just nasty. All right. We get it. I ain't nasty. We get it. We get it. You nasty. And and, nasty. and Jada picked Jada's hoes with one of them talkative hoes. And he started making a whole album about it. And you got caught. Or whatever. I understand. All right. Y'all both nasty. Okay. That's cool. All right. And y'all so nasty that you. That your son, that your son Jada wanted to goddamn emancipate himself from the family, and and Willow was walking walking around thinking, you know, this is normal, this is okay. I can understand why you wanted Dick to the side, Mom. I understand that. That's basically what she said. I understand, it. you know. Uh, she didn't say that. Understand. <laughs> we can understand why. That you know, tell your mama, I can understand how you want to dick to the side, mama. <laughs> That's basically what she said. And you ain't modern say era, that, Willow. You didn't say modern she, era, you didn't tell your mama that August you know, was a, 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 a monogamous relationship <laughs> might be <laughs> a monogamous relationship might just be, you know, primitive and it might not work with this day and time the way the economy is and everything. Oh. But so I understand, man, you know, you, you know, dad's a busy oh guy he out here making movies, being the Gemini man, you know, being Hancock too and all this oh. other stuff, being, <laughs> being Serena Williams and 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 Venus Williams' dad and stuff. You might just want you might just want a crazy young. Uh, hey, you kids. didn't have to make it your. I know it ain't no kids to watch the show, but uh, if you happen to be Thank listening God. to this podcast and you riding when you got your kids in the car on the way to work or something happen, and they happen to hear this portion, Jesus. kids don't ever tell your mama. <laughs> I don't care how old you get. <laughs> Oh, good, mama. I understand. I, I understand why you was why you wanted some dick to the side. <laughs> you can't say. Jesus, this is a ah! different way we live. They be saying all that stuff, all that, all that stuff in that high, high <laughs> elevated, and I'm I'm in a different mind, and this, this is a new age way of thinking, talk, and stuff like that. I. Right. I, I'm through. I'm I'm done. I'm over it. Okay, you over oh, Willie D. Man. Faces over Joe Button. I'm over <laughs> people. <laughs> I'm I'm oh, over boy. Willie Jada. I am done. I, I am done. Look, you are both freaks. Oh, y'all like fucking. Look, y'all you both attract black people, and and the world know it. And you have y'all prospects. Y'all want to go and bang out. I understand that. I'm telling y'all, man, something tells me this is gearing up for something like it's going to be a Will and Jada collaborative movie or something. Because she need to do something because she ain't came out with a movie in a long time. She's just not an actress no more. She's just retired from that forever. Something like, but it's it's, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be something coming from this that's going to, that they promote. Like, you don't do all this much talking. Like, and I know he got the book, but it's something else coming. Or maybe the book is, maybe some of these talks is like her way of like getting out in front of some of the shit that he about to say in the book. But it's something, it's something, it's something there. They, they promote, they about to promote something. I know what they promoting. They promoting. They promoting polygamy and, and be a, a rich black couple that get to bang everything they want to bang and stuff. I understand, Mama. You just need some dick to the side. She bang. Stuff. She bang. It's okay, Mama. You didn't just getting some dick to the side. You, you didn't have to bang my brother's best friend though. That's one thing. And, you know, you know, you know, he had mental problems. You ain't hey, really man. had to say that, but I. It's all right. Hey man, it's Jada okay. said if he old enough to cross the street, he old enough to get hit. <laughs> y'all related together because y'all music stars oh, and stuff like Jada that. Says she she a summer a baby. Man. Jada says she a summer baby. Her favorite month is August, nigga. Jada, don't give a fuck. She out here doing her. She 
He was thugging. June, July. Yeah. So Jada, Jada was giving Gina. August that Jason's lyric on the cash register love. She she getting her skeet I, I still I still said she was fucking for real in that movie. But uh, nobody they, said they she that. she was and pulling movies. that she was pulling that Halle Berry before. <laughs> He ain't gonna tell me that her. It's <laughs> called method acting. Oh, they was method. It was they was method. No, it was a method, all right. It was some method in methods. Some methods from the comic. It was some method. It was some method. Method and moves. Method and moves. Some fuckery mm-hmm. too. But a damn right shit. But I just want to talk real quick. Oh, customer service, man, the lost art of it in the community. <laughs> From dick on the side to customer home. service. You get yeah, that kind man. of customer service in Minnesota. It, it's 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 no customer it's service no more, yo. Like it definitely ain't motherfuckers it's 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 it's, it's, it's like the, the, the common DC of thank you. Realize, motherfucker, like oh yeah, courtesy don't exist, champ. It, 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 it's no way. It, it's it's no fucking way. Can I help you? Courtesy, no, man. none of that shit. Motherfuckers come up and just stare at you. I stare back. Courtesy. <laughs> I don't know if you're ready. I don't know if you just in a, a daze. I don't know. You you're supposed to be helping me. Like you just gonna stare at me till I say something. I'm supposed to be hello, man. I help you. Some 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 fucking thing. It's like if you don't want to work there, cool. No one no one's forcing you to. You can quit. That's real. People are people are hiring these days. Actually, there's a Everywhere. hiring boom right now nationwide. Yes. Yes. If you want to go somewhere else, you're free to do so. When you signed up for this job, they told you what you'd be doing. And you said yeah. you'd be okay with doing that. If you knew you didn't want to work with people, you should have said that up front. Yeah, I hate people that work in people jobs but are not people people. Well, get an office, like a cubicle job or like a behind the scenes job where you deal with limited people. Sure, I hate people ass. and I'm a excellent people person. I can't stand here with the death, but my, my customer service is awesome. People tell me that all the time. So if I can do it, yeah. you can do it. And I hate my, my customer job. service voice is on point. You know, my customer service skills is on point. You feel me? Like I've been in the customer service field for 24 years in some shape, form, or fashion. And it's pure just like doing the simple shit you was ready to do. Have man, it's God damn, it ain't that hard. That's it. Mm-hmm. You never know. You, you being rude at work to a customer because you having a bad day at work. You don't know what that customer going through. And you don't know what that customer got out of it. You say you something You don't smart. know if that customer is the CEO of the whole company or something. Exactly. And some regular exactly. clothes just coming in to, to test to see how his store is running. Oh, a crazy too. homeless man. <laughs> exactly. That shit, too. Because you never fucking know when you're dealing with Tis the public. what I'm talking about. Yes. You don't want no crazy homeless shit. man coming in and being a sock somebody. Shit. Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's good time. Just get the oh, man. Like, shit. If you don't want to work in customer service, don't, goddamn. That's real. Because you ain't because you ain't doing nobody no goddamn favor by being in the industry or being in that job that you don't want being rude to motherfuckers. Yeah, you get your ass cussed seeing out. Seeing motherfuckers be rude. You, you go get something else. You feel me? It's not this motherfuckers out here's gonna get you gonna get get you one five to the face. I can give you to you, but what yeah. you gonna do with it? It's some people out that. here that ain't you feel me? It's some people out here who have a real, real fucked up days. You yeah. go run around and be rude to somebody who just lost their apartment, just lost their house or some shit. They come to the store and get something for that night, and you being rude, they just lost everything. They beat your ass and then that yeah. for mm-hmm. Plus, it's free to be nice. Sometimes just spreading that energy could change somebody's day. They might not go out and beat exactly. somebody else's ass, or they might not go home and exactly. snap and abuse their family or do or hurt themselves because 
they got that piece exactly. of kindness that they might have been looking for that helps them to hold on for one more day. You know, like that's a lot of power and, 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 and just a good interaction. Like people might not remember what you said, but they will remember how you made them feel. And sometimes you could just a smile with a good morning. How you doing? God bless you. Whatever the K, whatever your thing is, your your courtesy is, you know, like a thank you. You're welcome. Uh, please. Sometimes just hearing please is such a rarity these days. That should have spent your whole day like, oh shit. Right on. And then your next interaction yeah. might be a little, little better, you know? So I definitely yeah. feel you on that. It's, it's, it's free to be nice, man. Positivity is contagious. Positivity is contagious. Just like yeah, motherfuckers have no problem spreading COVID because you don't want to wear a mask or get the vaccine. Motherfucker, just be nice. That shit spreads too. Shit spreads faster than COVID, we got them. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd be surprised. Walk, walk into a room, just say, hey, everybody. And they look at you like, what? What you said? Spoke. At least two or three people. Two or three people going like, hey, how you doing? Something new. You feel me? Yep. Try something different. You'll be tripping Hi, how, how that spreads too. Hi, like I, I, I've I've watched that shit spread. Like when somebody come in the room and it might be like a couple of people and then new person come in the room, you speak to them and you'll watch how like the next person come in the room, more people are speaking by the end of everybody just speaking and talking and mingling. Like it, it's a thing to that it's spreading that energy, man. That's big exactly, facts. Man. Just positivity. If you don't like the job, leave. <laughs> the job. That's yeah, don't don't hurt do everybody it. else's feelings and ruin everybody else's day because mm-hmm. you uh hate, hate 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 people. If if you or having hate, a bad day or hate the people that work. come to your job or whatever, I don't know. But yeah, I feel if, if you're having a bad day, you get in an argument with your with your significant other. Don't take your ass to work because you're gonna take that out on whoever you work with or work for or, or whatever. If I'm like, or make some be strategic. People. If you know it's one of them fucked up days, let somebody know, like your manager, your boss, your 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 consumers. Like if you are if you are the CEO, let your people know. Hey, let your team know. Hey, look, it's one of them days. Can I switch with somebody? Do something else? Or hey, can I get these few minutes here and I'll pay you back on, on, in this way later? You know, some but like work out a deal where you where you can kind of ease your way into the work day, maybe where you can get that minute to. Let me get ready to be around people. Cause sometimes it's just it's, uh, you be fucked up because you you're going off negative energy, but then you force yourself to be around people before you're ready. Like get that second. Get that, get that, get that time. Mm-hmm. Or somebody put you on a time mm-hmm. out, make you go night night. Hell yeah. Real fucking court. Just who, who pissed you off this week? If you want face, I feel like that came from a personal like, experience. Like, it's, vibe it's, change it's, and everything it, when you start talking yeah, about man, it. That like, shit got serious. It's like it, 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 it's like a collective of just customer service experiences. Motherfuckers is just rude, or like I, 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 I just, <laughs> mm. he's speechless. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm really trying not to backslide and be an ignorant person in these encounters because they're constantly triggering when people are just naturally rude because they know no better. So I got to be the bigger person. Yeah, that's the key but once right again, there, what you say, said. They don't know no better, yeah. If you don't want to be dealing with people, I'll say it in a different way, more correctly. If you don't want to deal with people, don't deal with people. Yeah. You can't handle Go it no somewhere more. else. Do it for everybody. Else. You feel me? There's certain things I don't want to do for employment. So guess what? If that's in the job. <laughs> if that's in the job description. I just don't do it. I ain't gonna take something that I don't want to do and be forced to do it. If I know I'm gonna jump, I didn't want to do it. That's big. Mm-hmm. Too many of y'all I had taken shit, jobs and shit. I know y'all don't want to do it. Then when it's time to have to do it, y'all get your face all frowned up. You knew from jump. Fuck. Stay ass at home then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get another. 
like my brother said, it's the employment boom right now. That's big facts. That means the rats. You can it do boom. Get another goddamn job. Get a goddamn job. Better raise your minimum wage. And it's another thing. It's another thing. It's another thing. Boom! It's on. These niggas will rock your dome. Boom! What's that? I had complaining about this minimum wage being fifteen dollars. Like you complain about minimum wage being fifteen. I remember when minimum wage was five dollars and fifteen cents. Dark times. Dark times. I've been working since then. So. Like $5.15. You're complaining about three times more than that. <laughs> right. And, and we don't even want to tell you if you were like a waitress or something. That's like $2 and then your tips. Oh, no, man. Now they uh they be having jobs for waiters and waitresses where they can actually get like normal pay. Good. Mm-hmm. Man, that's good. At some of them just so like it's it's like they 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 it's certain places that's working, it's just it ain't like a nationwide thing yet. Yeah, don't complain. But you can't and, complain, and another, of, yeah. You can't complain about progress. Like you either wanted to stay another fucked up thing. or you don't. You know what? I hate what people say. They work in your life as slave. No motherfucker. No, you getting paid. Pay. <laughs> you getting paid, you can go home. You exactly. can leave if you, you want gotta, to. You got health insurance, four hundred one k, and I had no goddamn health insurance. They got sick. The motherfucker just sick. You still better get your ass out here and work. We need no sick days. They, they, no they working no. you like a worker. No job works you like a slave. No, it's job all hard work. Like it's called work it for a reason. If it, if it won't work, they call it play. It could be a coal mine. It could be whatever. They don't work you like a slave as long as when you do your work, you get in the check. Stop I agree with complaining. that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Stop fucking complaining. Do what you, you sign up to do. Do what you sign up to do. I'll work in my last nerve, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel you. I feel you. Because work ain't ever work. You feel me? A job ain't never work. All work for a reason. You feel me? Where most, most jobs are fun. Like, most people spend their lives not having no real employment because they're looking for the job that makes them happiest. And I just want to find a, the great job and I may have, sure, that, that you may find that, but don't waste all your years finding that because most 90% of people in America work jobs they don't like. But if you have a passion and you're driven, follow your passion. You feel me? Follow your passion while you still have a job, but use that job to, to fund your passion so you can get to a place where your passion can can provide for you. Okay. But you know what it boiled down to, too? It boiled down to, like, I ain't gonna need front. Like, depending on the age you at, like, at a certain age, shit does start to catch up, and you might have to, like, go ahead and do, like, face it, and, like, let me go ahead and give me a job that can fund this until I can actually get a passion off the ground. But, like, if you young, one of the things I wish I would have did is, like, Find your passion young. So that way, while you got the energy, you got the time, while you got the support system that'll actually let you kind of, that'll help you out financially more, while you have less financial responsibilities, like use that time to be pursuing your passion. So by the time you get to the age where you are like, all right, nigga, you need to have a crib, you need to have a car, you need to have this, you need to have that. You done developed your passion into something that can make money for you. But like, I feel like the biggest issue with that passion thing is like like 90 percent of the people in america we end up working jobs where it may not be right for us or we may dislike it because we wait so long to start really figuring out what it is we want to do like we put off a lot of shit in the 20s to have fun instead of using that time to actually like do a reverse like work your ass off in the 20s on your passion so in the 30s you can have your feet up doing what you love and have all that set up but we do it backwards. We play around in the 20s, have fun, enjoy life. And then in the 30s, we try to figure it out and be like, oh, that's what I'm passionate about. And by then, it's like, you're older. You got it. Mm-hmm. Like, like, you are a depreciated you commodity as, as a person. You like, gray the older hair, you get, your senses dwindle, all of that shit. So, 
بس اول شيء تعال تعال موسيقى <laughs> being forced into a job all of a sudden because they done got some debt from school or they done racked up debt from just chilling and partying or whatever. And then they starting life at 25 as opposed to them starting life at 18, figuring it out and are, or even graduate high school with their plan already in action. So they, hey, if it ain't college for you, let's go ahead and start doing your passion now while I'm, while, while I would have been paying for you to go to college anyway. Or if, I, or if you're already in college, Start exploring your passions now. So when you come out, you got a degree, you don't already lined up internships, like you got a plan in that lane. So you happy. So you got your happiness, but you also have figured out a way to flip it into your financial game. Yeah. True. <clears throat> That's my thought. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Deep. Deep down in the river, Jordan. And on some other shit. I don't know if it's true or not. I've been trying to find out if it's true, but I heard a story from like I'll be watching all these weird ass internet stories shit about Uh-oh. um this one about Lake Bostock. It's about a lake underneath um the ice in Antarctica. There was some scientists both had to go there, had gone down there and found some shit down there. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's called like Lake the Hollow Bostock. Earth shit. Like what um, um something like that. Was that from when they had what was the dude that they always talk about when they be talking about like flat earth and antarctica theories oh no it's like a it was like, like a, um, admiral admiral bird or something like that hmm. no nah, it is okay involved. okay but it was supposed to be um some russian scientists and some um american hmm. scientists that went down there because they had drilled two miles underneath the underneath the ice and they found a lake down there and um so they found they had life that was preserved down there And it's called Lake what? Vostok. Like V-O-S-T-O-K? Yeah. Okay. It is the largest of Antarctica's almost 400 known subglacial lakes. So it is a real under ice lake. So we got that. Mm. It's located at the southern peak of coal beneath Russia's Vostok station. So that lines up with your oh, Russian God. scientist theory. Um, <laughs> covers an area of 12.5 of thousand kilometers, making it the 16th largest lake by surface area. Um, I'm trying to see. It's named after the Vostok station. I'm trying to see. Well, what about it? Some shit posts that happened down there, so I don't know. Like some contamination? Or some, some new creature type shit. Hold on. You said new new creature. Yeah, I'm, about, I'm looking this up myself. New life. Lake Vostok, new life. New bacterial life. Uh, does anything live in Lake Vostok? Diverse set of microbes as well as multicellular. What really happened at Lake Vostok? Russian scientists breached Lake Vostok in February 2012 after years of drilling. When they drill hit the lake, it automatically withdrew in response to the pressure change. Water then gushed into the borehole, pushing the kerosene up the hole before freezing. So they had like a contamination with like some kerosene there. I'm trying to see any animals there. I don't see it, but I don't know, but we're gonna have to look into that. We might have to pull that up on next week's episode now, because now you got me intrigued and shit. You, you, know, I like, know. you know, I like weirdo yeah. theories and chupacabras and shit. Oh yeah, shit. creature features. Oh, yeah. I love weird shit. I'm still waiting for my to find a real big, but shit. 
Yeah, I, I honestly don't money. think that there was because the first picture of Bigfoot was a hoax. So once that's a hoax, I feel like everybody else that just kind of went with the hysteria because they got that phenomenon where like once people believe something, they'll start to see it anywhere. It's like similar to the shit that make people see faces mm. and like potato chips and shit. It's something like that. Oh no, it's two I don't know different though. stories from different, different countries. That I, I would, I would that, say this picture. It's possible. The damn, uh, what was his name? Was it the Unabomber that lived in the woods for like all them years and nobody knew where he was at? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I feel like if a human can live in the woods, a creature that's actually milk for the woods can definitely, and we got a lot of untapped forest life, I mean, forest land in America Man. alone, much less wilderness areas like the Siberian area, oh, yeah. and Canada and shit like that. So what the rainforest. So it's possible that it is some shit. I just don't you talking know. about that. If it's Man, that. Forest territory. Yeah. We, it's definitely known that we got some unknown creatures living deep in the water, deep in the oceans and stuff. Now, like the that. oceans, oh, yeah, all, all bets are off. So, like, it could be something in Antarctica. Like, I wouldn't put it past. Like, the Bigfoot, I'm not as sure just because we are on so much land. I feel like helicopters or some would have picked up some traces that was, like, actual mm-hmm. evidence instead of all these hoaxes. But too many satellites. It's possible. I, I can't say it's impossible because it is the space for it to grow. But that art, that ocean shit. Oh, it probably is some shit in this lake and some more shit. Cause that ocean is so it's bruh, it's so much shit we can't even explore yet because we don't got the, the shit to deal with the pressure in certain spots and shit. Like, so it's it's possible as fuck that some some shit out there will eat you. I mean, the mm-hmm. largest animal ever ever known to be on earth lives in the ocean right now. So uh, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Possible. All bets uh, are off when it comes to this animal life. I, I don't I, hey y'all yeah. stay in y'all house. I'm gonna stay in mine. Peace. We gotta understand I'll stick it. with the dogs. Yeah. I'll yeah. stick, I'll with, stick with the domesticated animals that understand know they place damn it. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't need some shit that can rise up on me and and that's strong enough to take me out. I'm I'm good on it. Because you know the animals just be randomly talking to my ass. The fucked up part is I'm an avid swimmer, but that ocean shit I definitely don't really fuck with. Like I I I I, I swim in the ocean and I deal with like you know the the tourist area that's marked off for you to kayak and shit in. But like I ain't just going out of no deep water shit and just gonna be out there chilling in. No, I'm gonna stay on the boat. I ain't doing that. Stay on the boat. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing nothing. Oh, man, shit. kayaking is funny. Uh, oh, you're on the fucking boat. I shit. can understand. But yeah, the kayak, I you just really, feel like I'm gonna when you rent them shit, you don't really go boat. that far. Like the kayak ain't really that much deeper than where you can stand up and you can still see. You know what I mean? It ain't really that deep of a level Fuck when that. you on that. But see, he said really it, that deep. Yeah, because you because you got the option to go further. But I stay in the tourist area. I be right right where they got the shit roped off, where you safe it, where ain't no animals coming, where you know the most you might run into is a piece of seaweed. And if the shit do flip over, I can stand up and get my ass back to safety. But again, I'm an avid swimmer, so like swimming from there ain't no shit. But I ain't about to be out like a mile out from shore and it's deep as hell under me and it's shit swimming. And uh, <laughs> I'm getting my ass off the boat. No, we stand on the boat and there could be no little boat either. I need a big boat. I need some sturdy shit. With some back, with some backup, uh, shit in the in the in the body of in the hole, some backup holes that if this one breach, it's another one that's gonna kick in. Like I need some some safety features. <laughs> I treat I treat the ocean like I treat the highway. I need everything strapped in. I need all the sensors on. I need all of the bells and whistles. I need. <laughs> Damn right. I gotta oh, make it home. Goddamn it. I ain't got time to be no getting eaten by no shark, by no new species of shark. That's what the water. It's too much shit the in there. Get in the water. Uh. Cause you end up in three, four stomachs, you get eaten in the water. Like, you know, like it'll be like the first thing they eat you, then something bigger than it'll eat it. Then something bigger than it'll eat it. Next thing you know, you at the bottom of the food chain and you you just want to uh. go out and you know. Yeah, you bet that. Go I, sailing I, I for the day. By now. Oh, let, I'm straight. I'm straight, B. That's they, that's they crib. I respect they crib. I leave them to their devices. They don't come... Ain't no shark never swam through my front door, so I'm going to leave him in his crib. I'll go to the pool. 
The day a shark swam swims to your front door, man. Oh, he's gonna get his that's, ass that's, fucked up, but but that's neither here nor there. Me and my son already ready for that. We we train for for animal attacks and shit like that. Cause the first week we moved into this house, a bear was roaming the neighborhood going through trash cans. So yeah. So I yeah, yeah I got we, we train for all I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. Whatever come in my house. It's a stand your ground state, whatever or whoever, whatever it is that is not part of this family or this inner circle that has been allowed permission oh, in my house. No. You stand in the house, whether that become whether that means you become a bear skin rug, uh, some shark skin boots or in a purse for my wife, or whether that means you know you become a, a, a human, a, a human statue out front of the crib. But you stand there, okay, once you okay. hear, you hear, you chose. You chose. You I didn't invite Florida, you, but you here now. You come in here, KJ gonna get you. How how that P Diddy song uh, start? Yeah, we here now. Don't get scared now. Mm-hmm. You came in here. You crossed yeah. the threshold. Yeah. It's gonna be some threshing going on. Believe that. All about it's, the Benjamins. What? KJ got big. Yeah, and I'm and I'm yeah, I'm sadistic with it. Up. Like yeah, I'm gonna make an example out of it. Like. Like, so I, sure. To this day, I've not experienced that. But if a, if a creature come up in here, oh, y'all gonna see me with a new coat on the next the next show. Yeah, yeah creature coat. But like, but like, look at this, look at this original beaver fur. I made this myself, yeah. y'all. You got a platypus coat on. Shit. <laughs> Face ain't gonna have to worry about no new fabric for the store. I'm gonna send them a whole spool of some animal. Hey, look, you got leather out of this. You got fur out of this. You got some thread no, if you want to do it that way. Whatever you I got, need. I got this dude platypus bill, shout it. Shout it, man. Take that shit back to the 1800s, man. I'm going to have me a fucking general store. Come, come, get all your, come get all your trap and fur trade right here. I got you. <laughs> get all your pelts. Your animal pelts. Well, any black Poon. business, please? Poon Pet got the coon new and Tia's gonna head it gonna head it pelts. Pelts and poon. Or oh, poon and pelts, you prefer you for yours first. Right. You, you good. <laughs> <laughs> good. At least the hoes Pets will be poo. warm. Oh Pets. y'all know that's the name of this episode. Pelts and poon. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> That is it. Please. I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna get through the census, but that's it. It might not get no ad revenue on this one, champ. But Pelts and Poon is it. Um, but um, black businesses of the week, 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 week. Um, I got one. I got one. I got one. Um, Pelts and Poon. Let me throw a huge and wonderful shout out to just like Mama. It is a soul food restaurant over here in Georgia. Um, I don't know how many, if it's a chain or not, but if you're ever in the Georgia area, west, west, west of Atlanta, please look them up. Uh, some of the best fucking fish. Greens was on point. Cornbread hit like mm. slamming. And, and generous portions, like it's three dinners in one. So if you get a chance, shout out just like mamas, just like mamas.com is the website. Just like mamas. Y'all know how to spell your, your mamas. Oh, M-A-M-A-S too, not the M-O-M-M-A. M-A-M-A. But yeah, just like mamas. I believe that's it. Okay. I got one too. I got one too. I'm gonna shout out this um this little restaurant in Petersburg, Old Town specifically. It's called Shut Your Mouth. It's a little old old time cafe. Oh, it's um, just like mamas.org. My bad, my bad. Sorry to cut you with. Oh, well, you good, bro. You good, brother. Um, yeah, well, shut your mouth. Yeah. Mm. Shut your as mouth. You walk, as soon as you walk in the door, the smell captures you. I'm sorry. I don't care what time of the day you walk in. I like to be that captured smell. by good food smells. That smell's gonna capture you. And make as long you as they ain't cooking no somewhere. chitlins. Uh, my bad, my bad. Go ahead, keep going. The soul food is on fucking point. Mm. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. 
Yes. Old Town, Petersburg. Check it out. Please man. support Black business in Petersburg too. Google bro. We need a revival. We need a, a, to, to build up the businesses in that city, man. Support oh, yeah. my hometown city, man. Definitely. Uh, Matter of fact, um, might as well put more Black business out too. Um, shout out to Miss Pat Richardson. She's like a known like Black entrepreneur around in the 757. And today, she just opened up her new business venture, which is a, the coffee cafe inside Greenbrier Mall foot, uh, food court. Nice. So this was today was the first uh mm. the first day that she released. Really put it on the um uh, shout Instagram, out whatever. shout out Queen Pat Richardson and what's the name of that uh shop? The, uh the coffee cafe. Coffee cafe, and where is that at? Uh in Greenbrier Mall and Chesapeake, uh in the food court. Right, right on, man. Right. So, hey, look. So y'all, right. y'all got the meals right. on deck here, man. If you're in the Douglasville, Georgia area, go ahead to just like Mama's great food. If you're in the Old Town Petersburg area, stop by, shut your mouth. And if you're in the seven five seven area, go ahead to the was it the Coffee Cafe? The Coffee Cafe. The Coffee Cafe. Shout out and support Black business. And while you're supporting Black businesses. Go ahead, save a little chain, save a little, save mm-hmm. a little coin, mm-hmm. and come on over and get these clothes and merch and apparel and other items from mm-hmm. us. Support us as a black mm-hmm. business. Face, tell them how they can do that. Well, as I say every week, you can go to rtreclothing.com. Once again, it's rtreclothing.com. A R T R E clothing.com. Exclusive partners merchandise. Exclusive hard trade merchandise. Come check us out, man. Getting cold. Come smash up a hoodie or two. Long sleeves available too. Hey, you gotta go somewhere. You need a bag to throw your shit in. Throw your shit in a partner's bag. Right on. Got face masks. COVID's still out there, man. If you want a pair of face masks, we have them available. If you don't wear one, want a pair wear face masks, we have socks available. Indeed. Hey, Either way. Yo, I'm going to tell y'all, man, you can get everything on there. You can get phone cases, clothes. You can get your AC83 exclusive drops. Uh, One of the freshest new clothing lines out on the market. Uh, If you want to see how they look on a live person, uh, Pat actually did a photo shoot. So our resident model of the partners um, got some pics up on our Instagram and Facebook and whatnot. So check that out. And while I'm Mm -hmm. talking about it, since y'all know about the merch, if y'all want to talk to us about something other than merch, y'all just want to shoot the breeze with us, get to know us better, you know, have conversations about shit that we might not be talking about on the podcast. Pat, how can the people get in touch with us? In um, touch with us, right. I'm sorry. You know that at symbol? You know, it's like an A with squiggly line surrounded it, whatnot. You press that with the squiggly. You put mm-hmm. the squiggly line, whatnot. So you at symbol, T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S, and that is the Twitter, the Instagram, the TikTok, the Facebook, whatever. Um, we don't got a metaverse yet, but yeah, whatever that would be, that we probably make it that too. Um, on Facebook, you can also, we, it's two of us, it's T-H-G-P-O-D-N-A-S, and it's Tiz Face Pat, all the partners or whatnot. Tiz is not really on Facebook, so sometimes I'll, I'll put a post up and be like, hey, is this what Tiz was talking about? Like, Tiz is that person whatnot hey matter of mm-hmm. fact now bringing that up tis i found those um i found those uh chair pants the wearable chairs yeah the wearable yes. chairs i found that i, I found told y'all that shit is revolutionary man <laughs> revolutionary man get your wearable chairs man i don't know who made that but that shit is amazing i love it um but, while we talking yep. about oh go ahead Oh, and I was just reiterating at T H E P O D N A S. Boom. Please, please, please. And last but not least, man, if you want to support financially, um, to just support the podcast to allow us to continue to bring you episodes every week and continue this video production, um, support by going to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners. That's buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners. Um, you can support and become a member for as little as $4.99. Um, you can also support and just donate for as little as a dollar. Um, 
on Bobby of Coffee, though, if you do become a member, you do get exclusive perks. You get unedited episodes of the podcast each week. You get exclusive videos that are only for members. You get exclusive access to our Discord, which gives you an intimate backstage um, access to us. Um, you get members-only events, et cetera, et cetera. So sign up there for Ooh, $4.99. It's if you a like lot to. of shit. Um, you can also donate and support on our anchor.fm backslash the partners uh, where we host our podcast. You can support for four ninety nine dollars there as well. Um, but yeah, man, that's how you can support financially. And if you can't remember anything I said, just go to thepartners.com. Thepartners.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is yeah. there. It's a one-stop shop. Um, and yeah, man, as always, I have been one-third of the partners. Your boy, Tiz. And he is along with the Padawan. And I'm along <laughs> with Dramatic pause. Yeah, 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 yeah. Face in the place. Right around second place in this race. Thank y'all for coming, man. Could have been anywhere, but you chose to be here with the partners. Appreciate that love. Like, comment, and share this shit. Indeed, man. We up out this thing. Peace.